That's a really nice shot. Looking straight at me. First off, who the heck are you? I like, ask myself that several times a day. I'm Terry Oslinger. I'm Senior Curator of Invertebrate Zoology and Geology here at the Academy. I'm Darian. Uh, I'm super secure in uh, who I am, too. Good. Okay, so I would say maybe the majority of people go through their entire lives probably without putting much thought into little sea slugs. How did they become such a big part of your life? It really dated back to when I was in high school. My high school biology teacher said that he had seen some nudibranchs and tide pools and he'd take me out to see one alive. And the rest is history. And by the time I was in high school, I actually found a new record of a species found in San Francisco Bay and published a paper on it and just became increasingly interested in them and then pursued that academically in a professional way and been enjoying doing it for a long time now. Just being present with the nudibranchs, they're so tiny yeah. and if you spend enough time with them, you like start to like speak their language, although we know yeah. that they don't speak language. Right, Correct. but they communicate um, other <laughs> messages to you. They're very fascinating organisms and that mm. there's a lot to learn about them in terms of their biology. It was their beauty that first attracted me to them, but the more you look at them, the more you learn and the more they have to tell you. Hmm. So I've heard you've described a good number of yeah. species of sea slugs throughout your career. Do you have a favorite? I do, but it changes almost weekly. So what's, what's this week's this favorite? Week's, um, I um, was just recently in uh, on the Caribbean coast of Panama and I saw a tiny little nudibranch that um, I, is one I've been looking for for a long time and I had never seen it before. Can you describe the, the, the new species you saw? The yeah, it's, it's just, um, it's got uh, yellow lines on the back and the head and blue spots around it and then it's got this sort of gray patchy margin around the edge of it. I, I could probably describe um, a sea slug too. I'm picturing one that's like like pink and then like a little blue or black and like it um it speaks fluent Spanish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have a number of how many sea slugs you've described? Yes. As a matter of fact I did a an updated count, and I think it's at 417. Oh, wow. So, and counting. That's yeah. cool, it's cool. I've described actually 418. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Out there. <laughs> what does it take to describe a sea slug? I mean, I obviously know. I just, I'm quizzing you. Okay. Yeah. You know, people often think, well, you discover something, you just name it, and it magically happens. But it, that's not how I conduct my research because I try and name a group of things once I have an idea of their evolutionary relationships to each other. So I will look at a family of nudibranchs in detail or a single genus. Sometimes you'll find something that's so exceptionally different that you will want to get that out there really quickly because it's just so exceptional. But generally speaking, I try to do it in a somewhat orderly, organized fashion. That was the correct answer. You passed. <laughs> it's a huge relief. Do you have any specific accomplishments that you're particularly proud of? I do. I have um, accomplishments that I'm proud of, but it's not in terms of the nudibranchs that I've discovered or named. It's um, the people I've interacted with and the students that I've trained and the impact that we've been able to make in terms of connecting with communities in the Philippines and developing jointly new marine protected areas and working with conservation organizations. So it's those things that are the most satisfying things in my career. It's making a difference. It's making a difference in training students and launching them on a career. It's changing people's lives that live in coastal communities and rely on marine resources to survive. When I look back on a long career, I think, you know, that's what really matters. Yeah, it's terribly beautiful, the, the idea that um, the accomplishments are the people and the connections and yeah, the impact yeah. you've had on others. 
My proudest accomplishment is that I won the 1986 Nobel Prize for Physics. Well, and, and at your age, that's really quite exceptional. Yeah, thank you. Oh, would, would you <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be onto the joke. <laughs> Guys, there's still more questions. Sea Slug Day also happens to be your birthday. Is that a coincidence? All of life is a coincidence, <laughs> but but um, no, the, that was actually by design um, that we decided, well, if we had a World Sea Slug Day, that it should be a special day. And, and somebody said, well, why not have it on your birthday? What day could be more special? And, and I thought, well, that's a tremendous honor. And, and I'm not sure I deserve it, but it sort of happened that way. And this year I'm gonna celebrate, I will be in Antarctica on my birthday. And I've been some remarkable places um, on my birthday. I, I remember twice being in Indonesia and finding new species on my, my birthday, which was probably one of the best presents I could give myself. I'll bet. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. I don't have a, You're very a quippy remark for that one. I am so appreciated. <laughs> oh, really? I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs>